Hello, I'm back in the workshop again. It's a bit colder now. We've had some changes in the weather. I've been bothered with some distractions in the house. And uh, in fact, I've got involved with another gearbox. It's a single speed gearbox and it's about, it's from approximately mid fifties anyway. And uh, well, a single speed, some of you may be thinking that's nothing to do with a Veloset and you'd be right. In fact, it's a clock. And uh, so I've, there's quite a lot involved in getting clocks to run. The key thing anyway is that any rules you might see as relevant for a, for a road going gearbox on a motorbike or a car, they don't really apply to clocks. You need plenty of clearance, uh, lots of end float on all the spindles or arbors or shafts or whatever you choose to call them and very little lubrication. That's the secret having uh, only a tiny little pinprick of oil dripped onto each one of the bearing points in the chassis or indeed the brass frames. So anyway, I'll just show you a few photographs of that before I crack on with the main business, which is to get this electric starter roller going. Uh, I've just been doing some preparation. I've heated up the parts I'm going to lock tight together. I've had them soaking in some hot water so they are not at uh, what is in, a, in effect a very cold ambient temperature at the moment. Right, this gives you a view of what all this has been about. There's the serrated edge and there's the gear. And that will sit there and there's enough depth in here to allow this gear to slide out and engage and stay engaged so this will work nicely and of course it'll pick up on the the chain so in effect this is uh it's taken me a while to get here but this is going to work all right <laughs> well i said that once before but uh, in fact, I think it did work all right. It's just this old motor wasn't really powerful. But this thing, I have high hopes for it anyway. And uh, that's it. Uh, the next stage now is to move this flange around so that I can put this part with this, this uh, motor part sticking vertically in the, the chassis. And uh, that means instead of just having three of these support tubes, I'll end up being able to put another one back. And I want the major dimension of this uh, thing to be in that plane. So, plenty of stuff to keep going, as long as I don't freeze to death. Right, here we are again. The plan is simply to uh, put this together. And put this together. Which way? I don't want to touch it. Yes, it goes that way. This is the part that has to end up going like that. So I need to just uh, put some Loctite in here. Right, I'm happy with that. I've already degreased my fingers with brake clean because I've done a little job on this to make sure that it is not contaminated in any way. So if I put that there, that will work. This is still covered in brake clean, and now we have to prepare this bit. Right, that's about it. I've got my rubber mallet here and this should just go in and be held up then on that little ledge.
Right, you can see how I've altered this. Uh, I've moved the mounting bolts from here, well, from here to here. That's pretty well at 45 degrees. This is pretty well centralized up. I've replaced all of these now, all of these frames. And uh, the next stage now is simply to insert this into the uh, the chassis for this thing. Uh, this thing is sticking up nicely, pretty well on center. So it's gonna be properly supported. And uh, all in all, I think this has turned out fairly well. Uh, I've very carefully spaced this part here into this machine surface, which was carefully positioned on the center of this plate. This received nicely the uh, the register here, but the register on this is different. So I had two options, either make another plate or space this out very carefully and then clamp it up. And when it's clamped up, then check. So I'm happy enough about that. This is now ready to go into the plates, which are down here. And uh, that's the next stage. Right, this just gives you a view of this contraption where this is going to go in here. It's going to go there. A little bit of slack so that that bearing is lined up at the edge there. That's going to more or less work out nicely. And this is all going to fall to, fall into place, I think. So uh, the next stage then is the chassis frames. I'm going to just make up some little spacers which will fill up these holes uh, and make sure the bolt stays on center. I'm going to do that for both of these so that uh, these things go together and uh, there's no misalignment between the shafts. As you can see this one is a little bit thicker so that's the reason I had to extend the shaft. I thought about going and bringing it back and changing it but I really couldn't be bothered. It was just an easy problem to solve on the lathe. I've got a new carbide tip in this thing, which is meant to be able to be very good for aluminium, so we can see. Yeah, it seems to be working all right. I just bring it in now, touch off and then see about uh, that potato cut like that. So hang on. I need to get the gearbox going. That's it. A bit of gear noise now. That should cycle along nicely. Take a look at these holes. That looks like 475. And this at the moment is 622. So I shall take a bit off this. So 20 hours a time. Sanity check now. Pretty well five on the button, and it needs to be. Four. Four. Four fifty-eight. 
<laughs> so we'll take another 20 off. See how that goes. It's very close. Right, we need about six thousand. Biological linguists often go out to places all over the world where there's undocumented languages, so they might be going to visit. And we have no records of them. And these are languages that aren't necessarily oh, virtually there. Right. Nicely. No slack there. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll leave this set at zero. Now that's the maximum depth of cut, and I shall think, simply take a hacksaw to that. Then eventually I'll re reverse all these little bits, face off the hacksaw cut, and pop a hole in them. That'll do nicely. So I'll join. You can come back again in a minute. Right, this is the last of these little top hats. I've set the slide and locked the saddle, so this is going to move across. And in fact, all of these dimensions are in effect going to be the same thickness, so that gives a little bit of consistency or a little bit of, uh, shall we say, a hint of mass production there, where they all end up roughly speaking the same or close enough to what's required. So the next thing now is to run in with the center drill. That's been surfaced. I can take this off and move this out of the way. Right, next stage now is the 8mm drill. And that is the end of that. Four little top hat spacers made. And the next stage now is to start bolting all this together. I need to just check on the length of the nuts and bolts available. But almost there. Right, this just shows the finished article. It's all been assembled now. And uh, there's only one little job I need to do before I put the chain on it. And I'll just set the camera up on a, on a tripod for that. Right, as you can see, there's a bit of end float on this, which I need to control with these little grub screws, which are in the built into the bearing. So I'll just nip that one up there, and nip that one up there, and then there's usually two of them. Yes, here they are. Here, I'll just uh, tighten that up. And then tighten this one up and then I'll give them a, get a bit of a tweak but this is uh, as far against the bearing as it can go and that means it will line up nicely with the chain so that's there like that I think I need a little spanner for that just to load that a little bit It'll do nicely. Right, 
Right, that's good. So that works in one direction. A little bit of slack in it there. That'll be grand. I just need to get some wiring into it now. Right, I just connected the battery up, put the connections together. I've got a little hot wire here to take off the terminal and uh, just see what happens. Well, that certainly seems a bit more invigorated than the last uh, motor. I think that's enough of that right here we go again this time with the chain fitted it does make a dreadful racket I have to say it's a bit of a I don't know I don't really understand why it should make such a noise but that's just small sprockets I suppose <laughs> almost too painful to listen to only to be drowned out by the racket the Veloset makes. Well, it's now come to this stage. I've done a little bit of wiring. I've got, uh, there's a little plug and socket and this thing. This is the on off switch. It's not actually, it's actually a click on click off switch. It's a, a high and low switch, usually mounted on the floor of a mini. So it's just a convenient, robust switch which is used to having people uh, put their foot on it. This is just a little plug and socket here that energizes it and works the solenoid work. And this then is the two great uh, connections for the... Uh, right, so now all I have to do is just turn this. <coughs> Bloody hell, what a racket. Anyway. <coughs> That's a lot more vigorous than the other old thing. <laughs> this thing here. It's just, uh, it made that sort of racket uh, under no load whatsoever. This thing is revving out and screeching even more profoundly, I think. <coughs> right, now to road test it on, see if it'll start the motorbike. plan here is to see what the speedo shows. Right, I'm going to call that a success. Uh, the motor actually, the engine was turning over there, but I think the battery's gone a bit flat. So I'm not out of the woods yet. I haven't turned the petrol on, just in case. I didn't want to start uh, diluting any oil in the cylinder by just unburnt petrol. But I'm very pleased at what has happened there. That's good. So I'm going to charge the battery and uh, I might even go for a, 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 shall we say, a hot start. That's good. Just give it a little bit of a tickle. I haven't started this in a long time. There it is. That's it.
right, I think that's a, a success. I'm very happy about that. I've now got another way of starting this whole thing, independent of the Kickstarter, which is a, a real bonus. Uh, I had a load of video which I took of other elements of, uh, in the workshop, but unfortunately I lost it all. So I've got some stills photographs which I can share to show something that I ended up making. It, like, an, like that old clock which I've referred to previously. It was just another little bit of a distraction, but great fun making it. So it's actually the, the bearing where the boom on the sailboat interacts or interfaces with the mast it's just a small little bracket that needed to be manufactured uh, I carved it out of solid but it's to replace something which is very old and you just can't buy them anymore anyway that's about it I've got some more work to do this old thing needs to have a carb strip uh, as most of you probably recognize storing machines with unleaded petrol is bad news so this is time this had a, a trip to the ultrasound and the next thing I need to do is have a look at modifying another old tank which I have bought uh, because this one is 1956 and it's not going to go on forever. I've got to think about doing a little number on it to make sure it doesn't leak or become porous and I also need to modify the bottom of the tank to make sure to make allowances for where I've located the carburetor. So quite a lot of just uh, just fiddling to get things sorted out. Anyway, that's it for now. This is a success. I must say I had doubts about if whether I knew I would if I knew what I was doing really. Uh, the first motor simply wasn't powerful enough. But this one here, this definitely seems to be powerful enough. Uh, and that's about it. So stand by for the next adventure. Thank you very for watching anyway. Bye bye.